Hello. Welcome back to Erin Ray ASMR. Today I am going to be introducing you to all of my plushies that you can see behind me. So I'm really excited for that. But first I wanted to touch on the most important thing that's clearly standing out right now, and that is the nails. I'm really excited about these. I know they look pretty basic, but I'm excited because I did them myself. Um, I've been really into this um, nail channel that I found recently. Um, I think she's called Joe Nail or Jew Nail. I'm really not sure how to pronounce it, but I will link her um, channel in my description. I'm really obsessed with her content. It's just very soothing, relaxing, and really creative and cool and interesting makeup. Uh, sorry, not makeup, nail decor. And uh, I've also been just kind of learning a lot about how to do your nails at home from those videos. And uh, this, uh, around May or so of last year, I got really into wearing press-on nails. Um, cause I always kind of like the idea of going to get my nails done professionally, but could never quite justify the cost, especially because I am the sort of person who wants to do things like that myself at home. Um, so I was going the press on route and that was fine and it was good, but I was just finding that it was kind of annoying having to keep them glued on. I didn't love the quality and uh, they felt kind of plasticky and very fragile. And it just also seemed like no matter how good the glue actually was, I could just not get them to stay as long as I really wanted them to. So I've been learning about how to do my own nails at home. And this is my third set. The first two were made with poly gel and they did not turn out good. I took them off after a couple of days because there was really bad lifting after a couple of days and they were just too thick and too bulky. So um, these are actually just tips that I um, fastened on with builder gel. And I painted them, and they are mismatched, because I got bored <laughs> halfway through the painting and just decided to go with a frosted look on this hand. But yeah, I'm really excited to keep doing my nails and keep having fun new nail arts to show. Uh, it's been a good time for me. But anyway, let's get started on the actual video. Um, I kind of had the idea for this kicking around for a while, but it was just, it seems like it's kind of an undertaking because I do have a lot of plushies, um, but I was just really struck with the inspiration to do it, so I gathered them all here on my keyboard. Most of them actually already do live here on the keyboard, and you may have seen them in the backdrop of my previous video. But I went around the house and gathered up all of the other ones who don't live on the keyboard behind me. And um, I put them all together so that they are all cuddling in one big family. And we're going to kind of go through them one by one and I'll talk about where I got them and how long I've had them. And little interesting stories or anecdotes that I might have about each one. So uh, I've been collecting plushies since I was a little, little baby. It's probably the one thing that I find true comfort in, um, just having something soft and cuddly to just hug when you, you know, need a little hug or a little cuddle. Um, and I just find them so cute and so lovable, I actually have a really hard time not like personifying them in my head, and I give them all personalities and likes and I, uh, used to feel really bad as a kid for having a favorite plushie because I felt like I would make the others feel bad. So uh, that is the depth of my insanity when it comes to how I feel about my plushies. So some of these I've had for years, like a long time. Some I've gotten only kind of recently. Some of them have names, like their actual official names, and some of them have names that I've given them. And some of them don't have names at all, they just kind of have little A 
aliases that I know them as. So um, let's just dive on in and get started when we meet the first one. I think we'll start at this end and just kind of work our way that way. So the first fleshy friend that I will introduce is Sleepy Time Bear. This is official Care Bears merch from, oh gosh, I thought maybe he might have a year on the tag, yep, 2002. So I've had this guy for a good long while and I think he was um, just a little present from my grandma during a summer vacation visit and uh, I don't, I didn't really watch Care Bears or have a lot of interest in Care Bears but um, when I was, you know, allowed to choose which toy I wanted from, I guess we were probably at Walmart for some reason I was just really drawn to this little sleepy time bear and that's who I picked out he's really cute, he's quite old a little bit dusty but other than that, he's very intact no pulled threads or anything he has some beans in his little feet to make them kind of weighted so that when he sits his feet just prop up right there in front of him and he sits up nice and straight he's super cute but I don't really have a whole lot to say about him so. and then the next one is also similar to that he was just sitting on the end here this is a mogwai um, I guess he's probably in, you know, and in his production, he is meant to be Gizmo, the Mogwai from the movie Gremlins, the main character Mogwai. But um, I just kind of see him as just a Mogwai. Um, he doesn't really have a name, I just call him you know, the Mogwai. He has little hard toes and little hard hands and little hard ears and he has little hard eyes and a mouth but I don't really want to tap on those, that seems pretty rude I picked him up no he doesn't have a year on him I picked him up uh, in New York City when I went there on a trip. It was a few years ago, my partner's cousin was getting married in Massachusetts, so while we were there we just kind of detoured into New York City and had a little visit because we'd never been before. And he's just from a Toys R Us, honestly. I have other uh, souvenirs from that trip as well. I didn't just <laughs> go to a Toys R Us and buy a toy that I could have gotten anywhere. But um, I just, when we went into the Toys R Us, uh, it was like a huge three-story Toys R Us or something. It was actually pretty cool. But he was just the only little lonely Mogwai sitting on the shelf. And he was, he didn't even have a tag or a price tag or anything. I, I honestly could have probably just walked out of the store with him, but we were honest. We went to the counter and asked if we could purchase. I think we got him for like eight dollars or something. But he is super duper cute and I love his little pleasant expression on his face. Normally he sits over there on that bookshelf. Some of these kind of live in scattered places throughout the house. Okay, and this next one still has a tag. Some of these still have tags on them, many don't, but I don't know, for some reason there's a part of me that uh, especially when I get these plushies as gifts, I feel like removing the tag is like, I don't know, disrespectful or something somehow. But this is just a fluffy little tiger. He's a little beanie baby tiger. He's full of beans. And as you can see, maybe it's hard to see, but he's very sun damaged. You can kind of see here on this shoulder and this haunch there. Those are pretty orange, pretty dark orange. And then on this side of him, he's very light, like almost like a light brown. He's so sun bleached. And that is because he, along with a few others, used to sit on the dashboard of my car when I was 
was uh, in my early 20s driving around. Let's see. No, no year on him. They don't always have a year, but sometimes they do. Oh wait, this one? Nope. That's a different number. But I, sw I would say that I've had him since about 2008 or so. I, I'm guessing he was probably a gift, considering that I left the tag on. I can't remember if his nose was pink or if it was always gray. He's very sun, sun bleached. And he does not have a name. He's just a tiger. I don't even really have an alias for him. He's just a cute little tiger. And the next one is also like that. This is a blue whale. And it's um, a Webkins. <laughs> I don't know if anyone remembers Webkins or if those are still around. I don't know what they are for or what they are meant to do, the Webkins, but I love whales. So, um, my friend, my sister-in-law, actually, a lot of these are from my sister-in-law. Um, we were best friends before she married my brother, so we've known each other for a really long time, and she knows my tastes very well, especially when it comes to these little plushies. So this is just a blue whale. I love whales. Um, and he's just a cute, fun, fuzzy, he like has these fuzzy threads all over his body. Like he's not quite a fuzzy whale, but he does have threads. So he has texture. And then he has these little beady black eyes. And he's just a blue whale. So he's very cute. Had him for about the same amount of time as the tiger, I wanna say. Okay, and this next one is actually kinda special. This one has a story. This is Muffin. I didn't choose the name. So Muffin was initially a prop. In uh, college I was a theater major. I know. <laughs> but I took acting and also directing classes. And in one of my directing classes I had a scene where uh, one of my actors was meant to interact with a cat, or at least be talking about a cat, so we thought that it would be appropriate if he was, if he had a prop cat. So I just went to Toys R Us. I, I guess some of these are from Toys R Us. I don't know if that's really, if, if Toys R Us is really around anymore, but that was where I would go if I just needed a plushie toy, because they had the best selection of plushies. They had a whole big section of them that looked like a dog pound or an animal shelter or something where they were, had all the little animals all lined up that you could take home. Anyway, that's where Little Muffin came from. The cat's name was Muffin in the script. And um, the actor who initially was using the prop of, of the cat was pretty obsessed with this cat at the end of the run. And he kind of begged me to, to let him keep her, but I really just couldn't. I mean, I did buy her with my money. So, um, I mean, I feel like maybe in another circumstance I might have gifted him Muffin, but she's just too sweet. I just love her so much. She's just a little, I guess a Siamese cat. The markings sort of look like that. She's just a little fluffy little kitty kind of posed like she's laying down almost, but it just makes her easy to kind of hold and pet, and that was why I picked her out. She made a really good prop. Okay. This next one is just a monkey, a little Velcro monkey. His little eyebrow has come undone. That came undone years ago, and I haven't bothered to fix it. But he's just a little velcro monkey, so he can like hang on things and his little hands velcro together. I have had him since I was a teenager at least, because I remember wearing him around my neck for homecoming week. Maybe it wasn't around my neck, because I cannot fit him around my neck now. <laughs> but I don't know how much smaller my neck and shoulders were when I was a teenager, so. Maybe I did wear him around my neck um, 
but it was jungle day or something for homecoming week, so I wore like a green t-shirt and a little monkey. But now, I just let him sit on the keyboard. It's gonna be kind of difficult with the nails. There we go. And just tie his arms like that. So he's just sitting with this very smarmy, folded arm expression. And he doesn't have a name either. He's just a little Velcro monkey. I think he was a gift when I was a teenager. I used to kind of collect monkeys, just like monkey memorabilia, so people used to give me things like that. Okay, and then this one, this one kind of gives me sad feels. This one's a little very worn, very well-loved rabbit, just a little white rabbit. It has bead eyes, but they are hardly visible, and under all this smashed down fuzz, this fuzz was probably once very soft at one point, and now it's all clumpy and pilled, and this rabbit obviously has seen better days. I don't see a year on this one either, but... This one came to me recently, actually, in the past couple of years. I found him on the floor of a Target, just lying there in the middle of the in the middle of the wide aisle. So it wasn't even on a side aisle; like it wasn't like you know hidden amongst the aisles. It was just right there in the middle of the wide open floor. And I looked around everywhere um, for a small child. And I didn't see one, so I picked up the rabbit and just kind of carried it with me as we were doing the rest of our shopping. And I kept my eye out everywhere for any kind of small child, and I honestly didn't see any children during that entire trip, which was weird. Um, but I did not find the owner of this rabbit, so I saw no other choice but to take him home. He's another nameless one, but I kind of, I call him my velveteen rabbit. He's not made of velveteen, obviously, but it just reminds me so much of the Velveteen Rabbit. I don't know if anybody read that book as a child or as an adult or whenever, but it's very, very sad, but very lovely if you need um, a book recommendation for something that will, you know, just kind of break your heart, but in a beautiful way. Um, I recommend the Velveteen Rabbit, and that's who this kind of reminds me of. Okay, I might as well just get you over with, huh? The big ones are going to be kind of a pain in the ass to show off. But this guy is very important and special. This is Peter Russo. He's a floppy-eared bunny that I got at Build-A-Bear in Disneyland. This was a gift from Tim, my partner, but I, you know, picked him out and dressed him and everything. I just thought he looked so smart in this little suit with a tie and a little pinstripe vest. And he is named after the very tragic character of Peter Russo from season one, House of Cards, which kind of ages him because that was around the year that I got him and we were watching House of Cards and still liking it at the time. Um, but even though I ended up not liking that show, I decided to keep his name because it is his name after all. So, this is Peter Russo from Disneyland, build a bear. And he's just a nice, huggable, cuddly guy. I love a big, fluffy plushie that you can just hug, so he's good for that. But he's also good for sitting here and taking up space <laughs> and just letting the others rest on top. Alright, so this next one is quite old. This one is, oh jeez, I think I must have gotten this one when I was like, 11 or 12 years old, and it's just a little bear, just a little teddy bear, 
and he is holding between his two little paws a little pouch that is affixed to his paws with thread. He just has a few random gemstones, some rocks in here because I just wanted him to feel important like he was, you know, guarding something because when I was 11 or 12, when I first got him, I used him to store my diary keys so that I could hide my diary keys from my brothers. And of course, being a 12, 13 year old girl, the most interesting things that I had to write about in my diary were boys that I thought were cute and friends that I was fighting with and things I was learning about in class that day or Whatever. But that's this little bear. He also doesn't really have a name. He's just Pouch Bear, I guess. So, he has been around for a while. This next one is obviously going to have a name. He is an official plushie. I don't have a whole lot of official plushies, but the ones that I do have, I really love. This is Gandalf. And this was also a gift from my sister-in-law. That tag sounds really good. Oh, okay. I guess this is by Funko, so that makes a lot of sense because he looks like a, like a plushy Funko. I don't have any other Funko merch. I actually don't like- oh! His cape! I don't even know if I realized that he had a cape this whole time kind of shoved up into his hat. I must have known that he had a cape. <laughs> anyway, he's also got his sword that, uh, regrettably, I don't remember the name of. And his staff. And he's still got his gray hat because he is not Gandalf the White yet. He's Gandalf the Grey. But this was just a Christmas gift from, I want to say, 2013 or something. Maybe even longer. So that's Gandalf. And then I also have this little penguin. He's just a penguin. This is um, merchandise from the Monterey Bay Aquarium, which is um, the aquarium in my hometown. My hometown is kind of famous for it. But my brother's girlfriend at the time bought this for me, and I don't entirely know why. I think she was trying to get me to like her, because I didn't really. <laughs> Um, this was in high school again, so I've had him for you know a very long time as well. And he's he's in pretty good shape. You know, some of the white white plushies will get very very dingy, as you could see with the velveteen rabbit. But he's actually holding up quite nicely. You could still even see his little penguiny spots, his little freckles that they have here. He's very cute. He's one of my favorites, even though he doesn't have a name. I kind of. Like, the ones that do have names, obviously their names are important, but the ones that don't have names, it's almost just as important that they don't. They are just who they are. Usually because I only have one, you know, version of them. Okay. Go with you. This is, um, I don't know if anyone's gonna remember this. Uh, I can't remember what called and I don't have his tag. It fell off a long time ago. This is another one from the sister-in-law and it's the... that bear with the gnashing teeth and the little blood drips. This is a bear from that same line. As you can see, he's been made to look as though one of his ears has been torn off, but it has not. He never had this ear. He's been made to look like this ear was torn off. See, there's some protruding fluff that they've sewn on here, and then he has these little strings that are looped and made to look like loose threads. And he's lying flat on his stomach. As you can see when I hold him up to show his body, you see nothing but his little chin and the stitches that he has, these very big obvious stitches that run down parts of his body. But he is meant to just lie completely flat like this on his stomach. 
and he was one of the plushies that would ride around on the dashboard of my car, my Dodge Neon, back in the day. He is pretty sun-bleached himself, but honestly he's managed to hold up pretty well. Like, the tiger, remember the tiger was quite brown actually, whereas he still looks pretty orange. So, I don't remember who he is, I'm gonna have to look that up. We are about halfway done. It's not bad. So I guess we'll go with, um, yeah, might as well. And this one is probably the most sentimental item here. This is an orange dog. And it's called the orange dog. This is a baby rattle. This is as old as I am. This was one of my, if not my very first, plushy toy. He has a little plushy body, kind of, and little plushy ears, and then his head is a hard plastic. It's a little rattle. He has a tag that is shredded beyond legibility, so even if there was a year on here, it would not be visible. And his face has held up surprisingly well, despite being 32 years old. He's got little black eyes that have mostly faded away. Uh, his nose was obviously black at one point as well, it is no longer. But he still has these two little orange eyebrows and these little orange freckles on his cheeks. His body, I believe, was once white and now is a terribly dingy gray with these little flowers, little blue flowers on a checkerboard pattern. And the back is orange and it looks like a terry cloth, like a rag. Probably because um, this was also meant for teething when I was a baby. So I'm sure you could like warm this up or put it in the refrigerator and then it would be comfortable for me to use as a teething device. But now he just sits here with the rest of his family and he is the oldest of the bunch and everybody treats him with respect and with care because he's fragile. And after him, I put them together because um, they are the oldest, so they know each other the best. But this is... This is Teddy. She's another original. I think I must have got her when I was maybe five or six. She has a music box inside of her, inside of her belly. This is a key to the music box that's right here on her belly button. She, the music box once played Teddy Bear Picnic, but for as long as I've known her, I just used her as my teddy. She was, this was my teddy bear when I was growing up. Everybody has their teddy or their, their favorite little childhood plushie, and this was my childhood teddy, and her name is in fact Teddy, but it is spelled T-E-D-D-E-E -E -E. And don't ask me why. I think it's because um, when I was a preteen I used her name as my first like internet username ever. And I had to spell it really weird because obviously I couldn't just write the word Teddy. But she is obviously quite faded as well, quite dingy. She's something that I think I would probably pass on to um, my daughter, when she's old enough, I would not give it to her as a child, but it would be something that I would want her to keep and maybe pass on to her children one day. And so that's Teddy. I'm going to put the big one because I want to be able to put them back. This is another sister-in-law gift. This one's one of my favorites from her. Like I said, she knows me really well. 
and she definitely knows um, my style, especially what kind of fluffy little friends I would find cute. And I really don't discriminate, honestly, when it comes to plushies. I just love all different kinds of plushies and stuffed animals and things like that. Like, as you can see, I have a lot of different ones. Um, so it's not like I'll only collect certain animals or certain characters or anything. I just like plushies. So this was a Christmas present from my sister-in-law one year, and she's really special. I lost her tag, unfortunately. It came off. I did my ve very best to keep it because um, this is Erin the Zebra, and she's from Pier 1, and her name was already Erin the Zebra when she was gifted to me. I remember my sister-in-law was wrapping gifts that year, and then she laughed very loudly from her room and called for my partner and said, Erin, don't come in here. And then he, then he went into the room and they both laughed. And I had no idea what was going on. But it turned out that she just saw the zebra in the store and thought, oh, that's really cute. Erin would love that. I'll get that for Erin. And then she brought the zebra home and proceeded to find out that the zebra's name was also Erin. So it was just a little too perfect. But so this is Erin. Uh, yes, I do share a household with another Erin, and it does get confusing. I have to be very specific about who we're talking about. I'll do this next big one next. We are quite close to done. There's really only a few left. We made it through all of the really tiny ones. Here's another big one. Um, he's another recent one, and he's, uh, I just saw him in a grocery store on the new seasons, and I thought he was so cute. And just really, really wanted him, so I begged my partner to buy him for me. And, um, I did give him a name, and then I forgot what it was. Hmm. Apparently he's called Gibble's Monster, according to this tag. I have never called him that. I did give him a name, and then I forgot what it was. So I gave him a new name recently, and I realized that I couldn't remember his old name. And now his name is Ozzy. So... This is Ozzy, the monster. He's a nice, friendly, kind monster. Um, and he's a vegetarian, so. But he's very huggable and nice. He has a little bean bag booty. So he sits down like this, and then his little legs are also weighted so they can hang down. I like to make him sit on the edge of like a shelf or something so that his little legs can hang down like he's sitting and he's really really cute. So that's Ozzy. And next is another kind of important one. It's going to be hard to do with these nails but we are going to try. This is, this is a monkey. Um, I don't think we ever gave him a name, did we? Uh, no, I don't think we ever gave him a name. He's just a monkey. He's, you know, a cute little monkey. And, uh, I got him when I worked for the Children's Museum that I've talked about before. And he, uh, was very handy and fun. I would, I bought him from the Children's Museum. And then I would take him to work and uh, just kind of walk around and like play with the children and he would interact with them and the kids really loved it. But I would just kind of hold him like propped on my arm like that so he looked like he was sitting. And um, I would have him, you know, scurry along and run up and down, jump to the children, give them little hugs and kisses and stuff. So he's just, you know, a really fun little little puppet, little monkey puppet. I had a period of time where I was pretty obsessed with puppets, um, hand puppets particularly. Um, but this was the only one that I ever got, but I had my eye on this really nice llama puppet. That was so cool. Um, 
but I never actually got it. Maybe one day. This company makes really nice puppets. They are called Folk Manis. I can show there. I don't know if that was very visible. I can't see my viewfinder. But those puppets are really good quality and really, really cute. So um, if you want to Google them, if you're interested in puppetry, they have really, really good ones. Um, and then, all right, we'll just kind of move through the rest of them because none of the rest are particularly super sentimental. So we'll be able to just kind of introduce them pretty quickly. This is a T.Y. Beanie Baby. I believe it's the only T.Y. Beanie Baby that I still have in my collection, which really bums me out, actually, because I used to have some really nice T.Y. Beanie Babies, including some that were pretty sentimental to me that I seem to have lost along the way. But this is Bentley. He's a little cat, and he was a gift from a friend of mine that I think was just a random birthday gift. They gave me just like a bag, I think it was like a goodie bag with just like cute things that they picked up from like video game uh, conferences and uh, like book, like Japanese bookstores, like they did a lot of cool shopping like that. So they made me this cute little present, uh, goodie bag present, and this was in there. This is Bentley, just kind of had him for a while now. Like I said, I do not discriminate when it comes to which stuffed toys I buy, but I do have favorites. And as you can see, one of my favorite little plushies to buy are bunnies. It's kind of hard to tell he's a little bunny, because he's just a little poof of a bunny. Like literally his body is just an egg-shaped poof. I'm pretty sure I did get him around Easter. He's pastel rainbow. Very adorable. He has two little beady black eyes hidden in the poof and a little felt pink nose. And his name is Mo. And I don't know why I named him Mo. He just seemed like a Mo. But he is super adorable and soft and small and fuzzy. And I love him. That's Mo. And Mo has an older brother who by the way, these were also bought at the same grocery store where I bought Ozzy. So, this is Moe's older brother, Murray. He's looking a little more ragged, because um, I used to sleep with him. <laughs> and he's only a couple years old as well, but this was recent that I used to sleep with him, but then I saw how ragged he was getting and I decided not to anymore. But this is Murray. He's just another little fluffy bunny guy. He's kind of like best friends with the Velveteen Rabbit. As you can see, they are, you know, of, of the same kind of rabbit, so they get along really, really well. And we'll go ahead and do... Actually, we'll take these guys first so that we can get down to the line. This is another official plushie. This is Mr. Toast. I don't know if anyone will know about Mr. Toast. He was uh, just a character, I think, that someone came up with in 2010-ish. Uh, but uh, I have some Mr. Toast merch because my friends all thought that he was hilarious and would get merch at um, Comic-Con when they would go to that artist's booth. And this is one of the items that I was gifted, also from my sister-in-law. And then I have um, a piece of art that her brother gave me that is just um, another character of this artist's that, uh, that he commissioned the artist to draw for me. But this is just a little plushy Mr. Toast. As you can see, he is a piece of toasted bread with eyes, arms, and legs, and a little mouth. And he looks quite concerned most of the time. We're not sure what about probably because it's hard being toast. And then also in the realm of my favorites, obviously again, we have whales. This is an orca whale. I don't remember exactly where I got him from, honestly, but I think he was also aquarium merch. But I think maybe I picked him out myself. 
but I have always loved orcas. I think they're so gorgeous and terrifying. Um, but I think that they are just like the coolest, like the coolest thing that exists in nature. It's like you couldn't design something better than that. But anyway, this is an orca. His name is Orca, I guess. I don't know. He doesn't have a name either. I'm now realizing going through these that most of them don't have names. Well, I guess it's a pretty even split of how many have names and how many don't. This is an Orca. I think I've had that one for about seven years? Maybe more. Actually, I can't remember. It's been quite a while, so... He might have even been one of the plushies that would sit on my dashboard, so it has been a while, but... Anyway, I don't really remember his origin story. And then this is one whose origin story I know nothing about. He just showed up in my house one day. I have a tendency to gather things. Um, people like to give me stuff, especially my mother-in-law, um, when they don't, you know, have use or space for things anymore. People know that I love free stuff, so... This is something that just kind of showed up in my house one day, and it's it's official Jaguar merch. I don't know if you can see that. My partner's grandmother drives a Jaguar, so I feel like it must have come from his family. But it's actually a really nice plushie. Like, it's just a cute little crouched Jaguar with beautiful spots. I love his spots. He's so soft. He's just a jaguar, and he just sits there. And then next to him is the last plushie that I have to show. Mo just fell on the ground, but I'll pick him up in a second. And he is another sentimental guy. He's a lion. I think I got him at Toys R Us as well. He also doesn't have a name. He's just a lion. But I had a really big obsession with lions this time in my life, because I actually had a lot of lion and things and plushies, and only he remains. But I used to sleep with him in my bed too, and that's why you can see how very ragged his fur is, and his mane is all matted and pressed down. He once looked rather majestic, I think, but he's never had a name. And. He is the last plushie that I wanted to show today. So, I hope that you enjoyed this video. And I hope that uh, it was relaxing for you. Because this was fun for me. I haven't actually gotten to sit and just go through all of my plushies and think about where each one of them came from for a while. So, yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. And I hope you did too. And uh, we will see you for the next video. Bye-bye.